think sometimes when like flies like bash into windows, they just see like a Final Fantasy life bar. It's like 99.9%. .9 duh, 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 duh. Go on, lad, you can do it. Go on, you're living your best life, Mr. Fly. Considering how dinky plastic guitars with one of the buttons missing are now one of the most commonly encountered pieces of electronic flaunt in second-hand stores, it's safe to say most of the people watching this video played at least one Guitar Hero game. Although the developers of the first Guitar Hero game didn't originally plan on it becoming a huge smash hit, they did ensure that it rocked exactly the right amount. What do you actually mean when you say that? So if you hop onto Wikipedia and you go look at the official track list for the first Guitar Hero game, you will notice that hidden amongst the thunderous riff-driven metal songs, there are a few songs that don't seem to belong in a game called Guitar Hero. Can you clarify which songs you're talking about? Okay, so for example, people aren't going to sniff at songs like Bark at the Moon and Ace of Spades being featured in a game called Guitar Hero. However, people may find the inclusion of the song I Wanna Be Sedated a little bit odd considering the premise of the game itself. Seems a bit counterintuitive. It does, doesn't it? Considering I Wanna Be Sedated is basically the same riff all the way through. It's like, okay, it's a, it's a good riff, it's a good song, so before you go into the comments and yell at me, I'm not saying I Wanna Be Sedated is a bad song, I'm just saying it seems like an odd choice for a game where like the whole selling point is, don't you want to play that kick-ass guitar solo from that one song you like? And it's like, yeah I do. Are you sure you don't want to like, you know, just play the same riff over and over and over again? No. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yeah. Okay Brad, so since tangentially we're talking about kick-ass riffs in guitar-driven songs, what's like your favourite ever riff? Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be from a Guitar Hero game, but just give me one. Like, I don't want you to say like, you know, oh I really really like, you know, Bark at the Moon. I really like Smoke on the Water. No, Brad, reach really deep into the back of that playlist you only play when you're on your own and tell me one of those songs. Have you ever seen the film Titan AE? I have not seen the film Titan AE, why? One of the opening songs of that is called Cosmic Castaway and that starts with an amazing riff. Oh, I might have to give that a listen. Put these in, put these clips in for the people at home as well. Mine, is, this is kind of obscure, is um, Hero by Machina Supremacy. Just the riff's really, really catchy. It's like, oh man, I like that. I like that a lot. I'll tell you what I would have loved to play in a Guitar Hero game, but unfortunately they never crossed over. The popularity of Guitar Hero didn't dovetail with the success of this film. The theme from Pacific Rim. How did I know you were going to say that? <laughs> you, knew it. you could see it coming. That's not even in the script, but I could tell in my eyes. So how fucking kick-ass is that riff? I, fuck, I know it's orchestral, but I'm sure they could do like, you know, a, a guitar cover like they did with the Halo 2 theme. Getting back to Guitar Hero 1 and the track list of that game, as it turns out, the inclusion of songs such as I Wanna Be Sedated, which aren't necessarily as heavily riff-driven as some of the other songs on the track list, was an intentional decision on behalf of the developers of the game. Why did they feel like they needed to include these songs? According to a later interview with some of the developers, they felt morally obligated to fill the track list with as many dick-smashingly awesome songs as possible, even if they didn't necessarily fit with the theme of the game itself. So just songs that weren't ones filled with epic solos and riffs? Yeah, that's kind of the thing. So obviously the developers felt like they were in a prime position, knowing the game will inevitably be played by children, to expose them to music that they might not necessarily hear on their own. So rather than, like you just said there, filling it with songs that are full of kick-ass solos, which obviously is what I and other gamers want when you see a game called like Guitar Hero, they thought, we can do that, but at the same time, let's also put in like, you know, some slightly different songs that we still feel are equally as awesome, but not necessarily be as fun to play, just because the songs themselves are so awesome, and it's a good chance for us to like, let kids and younger people hear them for the first ever time, potentially. I think you also need a break sometimes from this every yeah. epic solo. Yeah, so you can't just play nothing but Through the Fire and the Flames, can you? Sometimes every now and again you're like, you know what? Let's just play some Paramore. I believe as well that reasoning is how they ended up at the setlist system for career mode, where to play the kick-ass songs at the end with all the face melting solos in them, you had to play through other songs, which basically gave you a crash course in rock music history. Was that the game where you had to unlock them in career mode? Yes, to play you did. Them? I, so think lot, it, yeah. I know a lot of people didn't like that. Yeah, in later games you just enter a cheat and get all the songs, but for the first, I think, one or two Guitar Hero games, you couldn't unlock the ones right at the very end, like the ones with the really kick-ass solo. You couldn't, you couldn't play Ace of Spades, you couldn't play Bark at the Moon, the ones that are fun to play. And so you played through all the other songs, which weren't necessarily as difficult, but were still good songs in their own right. And then there's those ones by bands you've never heard of. Yeah, and the idea was, if you've never heard of this band, you might think, that's actually a pretty good band, I might give these a listen. And that's what the developers were thinking, like, we are in. 
a perfect position to expose like people who may never have listened to this kind of music before to all the good music from this era. So like, obviously we can gate off the cool songs at the end by making them play to like a bit of David Bowie. It's like as, like, as good as David Bowie was, and as much that we both, we've talked on this channel before about how much we love David Bowie, like, no one goes into a game called Guitar Hero thinking, I can't wait to pretend to be David Bowie's guitarist. <laughs> no one goes into a game thinking that, do they? It's like, that's the way you think it. Like, no one goes in going, oh, I can't wait to be that chuckle fuck who played guitar in the Ramones. No one thinks that, do they? But the developers knew, like, this is pretty much the only chance these kids are ever going to listen to this music, so fuck it, we put it in, and they've got to play it, and they have to get you good at playing this song so they can play the cool shit. And that's a really, I think that's quite a noble goal, isn't it? Yeah, that's it? quite a good thing. We have this opportunity here to make kids listen to this music, so let's fucking do it. So before you can play Bark at the Moon, you can't play the cool guitar solo until you've listened to and appreciated Bowie. I've always like been annoyed that in the Guitar Hero games, they always went, oh, Guitar Hero Metallica. Okay, that's cool. Rock band, the Beatles experience. Okay, cool. Why didn't they ever do like Guitar Hero Saturday morning cartoons? How sick would that have that been? That would have been really cool. Like, so, oh yeah, what's like, you can play the Spider Man theme song, the Iron Man theme song, X Men, Transformers, The Simpsons, Flintstones, all that bullshit. Just like, like proper heavy metal versions of all this thing. It'd be like the Power Glove experience. It'd be fucking sick. And they never did. Power Rangers fit right into oh, that. Oh, yes, the Power Rangers. I didn't forget about Power Not even like the Power Rangers theme song, the Go Green Ranger song. Have you heard that? I don't think so. It's like I got really like excited a couple of years back because the guy who did all the original music for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers released like a remastered version of all the songs he did. And you can go buy that album, it's fucking sick, I've got it downstairs. And it's like this remastered version of Go Green Ranger. Like, oh man, this song's so sick. You know what, Brad? Like, and people are gonna think I'm taking the piss here. Do you know what Guitar Hero I kind of wanted that never got made? What? Guitar Hero Nickelback. <laughs> like, people probably think I'm taking I'm not, because Nickelback have had so many albums. If you look them up on Spotify, they've got like 14 fucking albums or some shit. And some of the songs in there are pretty goddamn good. Nickelback do have some really the, good songs. Yeah, and that's the thing, obviously, because they get shit on so much. People don't realise they actually got some good songs. And I'm going to prove that now with a story about perhaps my favourite Nickelback song. I know the viewership's plummeting. People are unsubscribing on mass. Well, hear me out, hear me out, guys. There's a song they've done called Side of a Bullet. That song, halfway through, has a guitar solo in it by Dimebag Daryl. If you don't know Dimebag Darrow, he's like a legendary guitarist who like unfortunately passed away quite young, as most guitarists do. Here's the thing though, that solo was recorded before he died. And it was put onto the song after he died because Dimebag Darrow was a fan of Nickelback. People don't believe this when I say it. It's like, no, like, as much as like people like to shit on Nickelback, other artists really respect them. They've got a lot of big name fans, including Dimebag Darrow and Pantera. So that song, Side of a Bullet by Nickelback, has a guitar solo in it by the ghost of a legendary guitarist. How awesome is that? How metal that is that? That is the most metal song to have ever existed. I don't give a shit what anyone says. Dimebag Darrell is playing a solo on that song from beyond the grave. That's fucking sick. And you know what? That's prime fodder for a Guitar Hero game. I don't know about you. Do you agree with me that Nickelback should be its own genre of music? <laughs> You mean, what there's, do you mean? there's so many bands that sound like Nickelback. Oh yeah, this there is, is thing like there? there's like um, Theory for Dead Man. Then there's Lands Down. They sound like Nickelback. I've never heard of those. Yeah. That was quite a big problem with pop punk bands, wasn't it? Because all pop punk singers sound exactly the same. And I believe you can look this up and put like the fact below as you often do. Someone did a study on it and found out what is this accent? This accent doesn't exist in real life. It's like the pop the pop punk like generic singing voice is not an accent that exists anywhere in the world. So our actual linguist did a study and found out it's like a melding of three different accents that just like naturally emerged from this genre of music and it's unique to that genre of music and that's fucking awesome. The one that Tom DeLong does. Oh my Where God. Where are you? No, he's got his own and voice. I'm so no. sorry. You can't sing Blink-182 <laughs> songs without doing like an over-exaggerated Tom DeLong voice, can you? I miss you as the best one for Because oh. you start off with like, hello there. Yeah, then it's, it's just. Where are you? The voice inside my head. I miss, I miss you. you. So good. Don't waste your time on me. <laughs> it sounds like Mickey Mouse when we do it. <laughs> <laughs> to clarify, I am not saying any of the artists we've just mentioned are bad. I'm just saying that the developers made a conscious choice to include songs that weren't necessarily guitar or riff driven in a game called Guitar Hero just because they knew they had a prime opportunity to make kids listen to awesome music from the past. You know what? That's fucking awesome.
All right, Russell, we're finished with the video, and I think for a minute or so we should riff hey, on uh, you know our favourite riffs, because I think that's, we talked about it earlier in the video, and I think we've really got enough time to get into it. So, throw some out there for me, Brad. What are your favourite riffs? Be as obscure or as mainstream as you like. Uh, I'm going to start off with Carry On My Way With Son. Oh, that's a fucking that's, good one. That's a strong one. That's in the first Guitar Hero game as well, I think. Or maybe the second one. It's, it is in one it's of them. It's so good. That's the one I used to play it like over and over again yeah. on repeat. Well, if we're keeping it with the theme of Guitar Hero then, Cliffs of Doe has got to be one for me. Oh my god, fucking, I love that song so much. That's the first song I ever learned to play on guitar, and I regret it every day, because <laughs> it's so difficult to play. The first riff I learned to play on guitar, the first solo, was uh, from Stacey's mum. Well, if you're talking about riffs we learned to play, um, Sorry You're Not A Winner, from uh, Enter Shikari. That, yeah. da -da 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 -da, that clap at the end. I contend that is probably like the hypest thing to see live. So I've seen a lot of bands live, and that one, when I saw Enter Shikari live, yeah. and they played that riff, and the entire crowd just goes, <gasps> Duh, duh, duh. It's so fucking good. I'm gonna go pretty obscure now. Okay. I don't even think this is played with a guitar. Right. Um, there's a song, uh, it's basically the Edgar Allan Poe poem, The Raven, okay. sung by a band called Omnia. And the riff oh in that my God, is you, amazing. You big emo bastard. <laughs> Audience at home as well, feel free to join in, just throw out some risks for you to listen to, because I'll probably click a few of these, because yeah. I'm always looking for new white music to listen to. Um, one that I really, really like, it's probably like, quite you know mainstream is a funeral for a friend I listened to one of their albums recently because I forgot how good they were and recovery the opening riffs that's really really fucking good yeah. and it's, like, it's on my gym playlist permanently now because every time it kicks in I'm like oh my this is so sick I'm so ready to lift these weights like, it's great oh man I love guitar music you don't get that with pop music do you so like you sometimes like with rap and stuff, I've heard people break down at rap and R and B and say, oh, like this, like this verse is so good. Like, let's listen to the rhymes that he puts in this. And I've listened to people like break down other forms. You never hear someone break down pop music and go, yeah. <laughs> really good this, isn't it? Like, Katy Perry is like really owning that auto-tune. So you never get that deal. Then like, obviously like rock music and stuff, you always, oh man, this riff, like listen to this riff, listen to this solo. Listen to like this high note it hits in this. That's a shame, isn't it, really? Like, it's so like commercial and homogenised that you don't have enough distinction between the songs for people to be able to sit down and like pick up and part. Okay, so to end, what's your least favourite like musical trope that caught on? I like musical genre or something like that, or like the trick they all use, because I know for a while, every single like pop song had the yeah, yeah, yeah. They all had that in the chorus, and it pissed me the fuck off because every song had it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, you, my, I can't think of any specific examples off the top of my head, but there was a, a definitely a bit where every single song for their chorus has had the yeah, 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 something like that, because they can't think of what lyrics to put for the chorus. And it was really annoying. All well, the unnecessary breakdown in post-hardcore music, I fucking hated that. That ruined every concert I went to from age 18 onwards, because every band had to have the breakdown. It's like, oh, cool. So this is the part where everyone acts like a knobhead in the middle of, like, you know, the dance floor, and just windmills to their heart content and punch people in the face. Great, I guess I'm going to get a drink now. I hate the idea of the drop in music. It ruins whatever song it's in. I hate it in pop music, I hate it in dubstep, I hate it in fucking... Oh, I hate it in... Especially, like, post-hardcore music. That genre that spawned out of fucking nowhere and ruined my life from age 18 onwards. Because every band had to have that bit in the middle where they go to the breakdowns and go... Duh! Which but, genre do you want back? Which genre do I want? We've talked about it's emo, isn't it? Cause I, I, it's more I want the style more than anything, but I'm glad pop punk's still going. Yeah, pop punk still pop goes punk strong. Pop punk will never die because you know what? The 90s will never die. <laughs>